Welcome to this massive open online course on how to develop a multidimensional poverty index or MPI. This course is a joint initiative by the United Nations Development Programme and the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. In the last three decades, the world has made massive progress when it comes to human development. More than one billion people have risen out of extreme poverty. 36% of the world's population used to live in extreme poverty in the year 1990. It has fallen to just 8.6% in the year 2018. However, about one in every 10 people still live in extreme poverty. Despite progress, it is sobering to consider that globally about 700 million people are still living below the international poverty line, that is, people who are living on less than $1.90 a day. Above and below this line, people are categorized as not poor or poor. But this international poverty line does not fully describe how people experience poverty in multiple and simultaneous ways in their daily lives. In response to this gap in knowledge, a multidimensional poverty index, the MPI, tries to capture how people experience poverty on a day-to-day -day basis. For instance, MPI indicators examine whether a household has access to drinking water sanitation facilities or electricity, whether a household member has completed five years of schooling or whether there is severe undernourishment of any adult in the household. And when we look at these measurements of poverty that go beyond income, we find that 1.3 billion people around the world are multidimensionally poor, according to the Global Multidimensional Poverty Index. And 879 million people are at risk of falling into multidimensional poverty, which could happen rapidly if they suffer, suffer setbacks such as conflict, drought, sickness or unemployment. Astonishingly, one in three children worldwide is multidimensionally poor, compared to one in six adults. Indeed, national averages can also hide patterns of poverty within countries. Look, for instance, at Uganda, where Kampala has an MPI rate of 6%, but outside of the capital, the MPI soars to 96%. There is even inequality under the same roof. In South Asia, for example, almost one quarter of children under the age of five live in households where at least one child in that household is malnourished and at least one child is not. We must also remind ourselves that poverty is not a static condition. It is constantly changing. For instance, it is estimated that by the year 2030, over 100 million people could fall back into extreme poverty due to climate change. So why is this measurement of the multiple dimensions of poverty so important? The use of enhanced metrics can identify the poor and assess whether someone is about to enter or escape poverty. It can help countries to learn which poverty reduction strategies work and which ones do not. Poverty measurements also help countries to gauge the effectiveness of their anti-poverty programs. They also help countries to align their development strategies to rapidly changing economic situations. In a broader sense, a national, multidimensional poverty measurement supports countries to build a more complete understanding of poverty in their national contexts. It also helps to increase national ownership and engagement in efforts to eradicate poverty in all its forms and ultimately to address the acute deprivations that are leaving people behind. Indeed, the goal of ending poverty in all of its forms and reducing inequality is enshrined in the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and its central pledge to leave no one behind. Even more specifically, the 2030 Agenda invites countries to broaden their traditional poverty metrics beyond income. It also calls for nationally developed measurements of multidimensional poverty in accordance with the Sustainable Development Goal Target 1.2. National multidimensional poverty measurements are now being widely embraced by countries across the world, including the use of MPIs. Approximately 20 countries have utilized the multidimensional poverty measurements in their long-term social development strategies. You will explore many of them later in this course. And many more are currently developing national MPIs. Indeed, national MPIs are also a useful tool to monitor progress on the Sustainable Development Goals themselves. They can also be utilized when it comes to the formation of policy, for instance. National MPIs can be useful to align programs, policies and budgets 
to encourage coordination between national and subnational governments and even between ministries and to strengthen transparency and accountability. Vietnam, for example, launched its national MPI in 2014. It is using the results generated by the MPI, combined with income measurements to provide tailored social policies and strategies to help people escape poverty and deprivation. In addition, Vietnam has used its national MPI to redistribute budget allocations between regions to prioritize the areas with the highest poverty rates. Mexico's national MPI also serves a wide range of purposes. It has transformed the national strategy for social inclusion on how to coordinate efforts for poverty reduction at both the federal and local levels. It has also fed into targeted social programs to assist those who are being left behind. When it comes to budgeting, the MPI helps to allocate the required resources to poorer regions first. The MPI also provides valuable insights into whether the national development strategy is on the right track and whether positive change is happening fast enough. Subnational MPI applications are also becoming more common. That includes Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam and the states of Minas Gerais in Brazil and Andhra Pradesh in India. An innovative example of the multiple applications that an MPI can have is the Business Multidimensional Poverty Index in Costa Rica, the first country in the world to use the MPI in the private sector. The Business MPI measures the living conditions of employees and their families in housing, education, health, work and social protection, in addition to their financial situation. The results are being used by companies to develop interventions to assist employees identified as multidimensionally poor and ultimately to raise their living standards. So far, a total of 39 companies have engaged in this effort. The application of the MPI by business can be transformational given the private business sector generates on average 90% of formal jobs in developing countries. However, we know that having a job alone is not a sufficient condition for a decent life due to issues such as low quality jobs and the inadequacy of earnings. Our sister organization, the International Labour Organization, estimates that out of the global working, working force, 8% of global workers are extremely poor and 13% of them are moderately poor based on an income poverty measurement. Therefore, there is a clear argument for the private sector to embrace the multidimensional poverty approach, to develop strategies to keep workers and their families out of poverty. Another example that demonstrates the versatility of national MPI is the Vulnerability to Climate Hazards Index in the Dominican Republic. The index was developed within the framework of the National Programme for Poverty Reduction. The main objective of this initiative was to integrate the links between multidimensional poverty the environment and adaptation to climate change in planning and development processes and social protection strategies. The ultimate goal is to reduce the level of vulnerability of poor rural households and to increase their resilience to climate hazards such as tropical storms, droughts and floods. Finally, we must remember that the pace of poverty reduction is starting to slow down. It is projected that at the current rate, 6% of the global population will still live in extreme poverty by the year 2030, potentially missing the target of ending poverty. It is very clear that better measurement tools such as national MPIs that feed into more efficient, more effective development policies can help us to ensure that no one is left behind. As you delve deeper into this course, you will gain practical insights from policymakers and practitioners working on the front lines to end poverty on the multiple applications of the MPI as a tool to improve policy design, coordination and evaluation. As this course broadens your knowledge, you will play a part in advancing our efforts to end poverty in all of its forms everywhere by the year 2030. And there are many reasons for hope. Look at the fact that in India alone, some 271 million people escape poverty in the space of just 10 years. Poverty does not have to be permanent. 
Thank you for being part of this course.